Hello, it's Oscars weekend and I'm in Cambridge to meet Jane Hawking, the first wife of acclaimed physicist Stephen Hawking, to find out how her belief in God kept her going as she lived with his debilitating illness and his atheism. And I'm here in the West End to meet Hollywood actor David Iyelowo and find out how faith was his inspiration when playing Dr. Martin Luther King in the Oscar-nominated film Selma. I heard God tell me that I was going to play this role. I heard him say, you're going to play Dr. King. And history is made at the British Library, where the four original copies of Magna Carta are brought together for the first time. And we have some fantastic music from around the UK to sing along to. Plus, we'll have a performance from one of the School Choir of the Year semi-finalists. But we start with a hymn to mark the beginning of Lent. And it's also one of Jane Hawking's favourites. British film The Theory of Everything is well represented at tonight's Oscars. Based on the memoirs of Stephen Hawking's first wife Jane, it's an insight into their real-life relationship as they struggle with his motor neuron disease. If you care about me at all, then please just go. I can't. I have two years to live. I need to work. I love you. you you've left her. That's a false conclusion. I want to find out what it was like for Jane to live not only with a genius, but an atheist, and to care for him whilst raising a young family. However bad life may seem, while there is life, there is hope. Jane, lovely to see you here in St John's College, where a lot of the filming took place for the movie. What was it like seeing yourself up there on the big screen? The film started, and there was Felicity playing me. And I thought, this is really weird. I'm sitting here in the cinema, but I'm also on the screen. And she had captured my movements, my speech patterns, my gestures so well that it really was me. You're young, Jane. Tragedy strikes. Stephen is very, very ill. Why did you decide to marry him? There was no question in my mind. I loved him and I wanted to do my very best for him so that he could fulfill his... Uh, potential and his ambitions in whatever time was given to him and I knew he was amazingly intelligent but he was uh, charming and he had a lovely sense of humor and he had wonderful gray eyes so I, I really wanted to devote myself to him for as long as it took there that's better isn't it yes so raising a young family, Jane, three, three young children, as well as caring for Stephen, it can't have been easy. Um, it was fine at first because I did have so much energy. 
but with Stephen on one arm and a six-week-old baby on the other and all the flying and having two more children, I really got to a state of exhaustion. But you've got a lot of strength now. You oh, seem I'm leading, very and leading fit and healthy. A, a normal and very enjoyable life now. What was it like, Jane, living with uh, one of the brightest minds in the world um, and he didn't believe in God? What was it like for you? It wasn't a problem at first because Stephen didn't flaunt his atheism and uh, my faith is something very personal and I don't try to impose it on anybody else because I respect their points of view. So we lived in harmony for a very long time and it was latterly that Stephen became more of a pronounced atheist and I suppose that was really because if you're um, diagnosed with a terminal illness when you're very young it would be very difficult to believe in a benevolent God and also Stephen is a scientist so how could he be expected to take a leap of faith into something that you couldn't prove do you think perhaps Jane your own faith helped carry you through without my faith I would have gone under I needed the support of believing that there was something greater and uh, Often things happened which were rather belied Stephen's um, atheism. For instance, the fact that he doesn't believe in miracles, but I believe that it's a miracle, a miracle of modern science, a miracle of medicine, that he is actually still with us.